Hello aquaponics enthusiasts, uh, in this video we're going to see how to test the aquaponics water. So if you are new to aquaponics, this video is going to be very helpful to you because in this video we're going to see how we take care of our aquaponics system for, from a water perspective. You know that in our water there are different parameters that we need to balance. So why are we doing any water tests is to make sure that we got a good balance in our aquaponics system and to make sure that we're going to be able to keep the fish in good health but not only the fish, the fish, but also the bacteria and the plants. We're going to make sure that the water parameters that we have into the water are going to be adapted to their needs. So very often people ask me how often should I test the water quality of my aquaponic system? Uh, that's an interesting question and there is no uh, direct response. If I wanted to respond to you straight away, I would say once a week is a good average, but it really depends on a lot of different things. The first thing is how old is your aquaponic system? Uh, if you have an aquaponic system that has been around for a few months, uh, six months or one year, well, the system is quite stable. You got a good balance in your aquaponic system. And if you don't have too many fish, you know that there is no much variation into your water parameters. So in this case, once a week is good. Once every two weeks could be okay. Some people test the water once every month. Some people never test the water. So really, it really depends on the age of the system. But if the, uh, the system is too very young, then you need to cycle the system. I made a video on this called uh, the, golden, the golden rule to start your own aquaponic system. And basically what I'm describing in this video is what you need to do when you start your aquaponic system. Because at the beginning, there are no bacteria in the grow bed. So you need some time to cycle the system. And uh, in this case, uh, it may require to test the water every two to three days to make sure that the bacteria are growing and your nitrates, uh, sorry, your ammonia and nitrate are going up at the beginning and going down then when you got enough bacteria. So there is a whole cycle to really um, uh, look after to make sure that the cycle occurs. And uh, that's something that I described in this sort of video. So if you haven't done it yet, I really recommend you to check this video. It's the golden rule to start aquaponics. The temperature is also another factor. Uh, if you have some fish, they have a limit, you know, a high limit and a low limit of temperature. Uh, if you are close to the limits, well, you need to test your water more often because the fish are going to be more stressed. So you want to make sure that the water parameters are going to be spot on. You don't want to have uh, to stress the fish with poor quality water if the fish is already struggling because it's already at the limit of the temperature range that it can accept. It also depends on uh, the fish biomass that you have, the quantity of fish that you have in the aquaponics system. So uh, in aquaponics, I generally recommend to not stock over one kilo of fish per 50 liters of grow bed media. So if you are close to this limit, I really recommend to test your water often. Because if you are close to the limit, it means that at one point, you may not have enough bacteria to transform all the fish waste. And in this case, the toxicity of the water can start to increase. You can have a peak of ammonia or a peak of nitrates. So when you are close to this limit, you need to check your water pretty often. In this case, I would recommend to check it every three or four days. And another factor that I think is uh, crucial is your level of experience. If you are a beginner, I think it's very helpful to test the water often. Because the more often you test the water and the more you understand how the system is working, how the system is evolving. So uh, if you are new to aquaponics, I recommend you to test the water every three or four days. Once you get a bit of experience, then you can do it once a week. And if you are really experienced and you have all the other factors that are low, so are good, you know, like you don't have too many fish, uh, they are not uh, near the temperature, uh, at the limit of the temp temperature range, then you can maybe do a testing every two weeks or every month. It's really up to you. So when we talk about water quality tests, we are talking about different parameters that we check, we check the concentration into the water. So there are four main 
uh, water parameters that we really want to check in aquaponics. They are uh, the three types of nitrogen that we find into the water. So ammonia, nitrate and nitrate. Those three parameters, they are very important to check uh, because basically uh, if you have too much of one of those, uh, you, you may kill your fish, especially ammonia and nitrate. And if you don't have enough nitrate, <laughs> you may have a problem because you don't have food for your plants. So that's crucial to know the concentration. And that's what we're going to do together in this aquaponic system. We're going to test those parameters. There is another one. So I say there are four major parameters. The other one is the pH. The pH is basically the acidity of your water. Is it an acidic water or basic water? So basically we take a bit of water and we check what is the acidity of the water. You know that with time, with all the, this nitrogen cycle that we have in aquaponics, it's always releasing hydrogen into the water. And when it does this, uh, it basically acidifies the water. So the pH is always decreasing slowly, slowly. And our aim is going to be to monitor the water to make sure that we are not too low in pH. And if needed, we're going to add some things into the water to increase the pH to maintain it at a good concentration. So the ranges that we are looking for those parameters, ammonia and nitrate, we are trying to go for zero ppm, zero part per million or zero milligrams per liter, if you like, it's different units, but that's the same thing. We want to get zero for those parameters because they are very toxic for the fish. Now, if you got 0.25, it's acceptable. 0.5, it's already the limit, but if you are at one ppm, it's not good. Uh, then you would need to act to do something on your water. So generally, we renew some water um, to allow to decrease those concentration. Nit nitrates, as I said before, is a little bit toxic for the fish, but that's the food for the plant. So we want to have a little bit of nitrate into the water. So uh, if, you are, if you are above 100 ppm, that would be perfect for the plant, but unfortunately the fish will start to be stressed. So I recommend to stay between 20, 50 ppm. It's, it's a good range of nitrate to have in aquaponics. And now pH again. If we go back to the pH, what I recommend is to say, stay around seven. And it really depends on the type of fish you have and the crop, but generally a good compromise is to stay around seven, because that's basically the neutrality. So it's not acidic, it's not basic, it's just in the middle. And you can allow yourself a bit of variation. Uh, 6.4 to 7.8 is good. Uh, you know, don't go to the extremes, but that's, Good ranges. So now there are other parameters that are interesting uh, to know in aquaponics. Um, so you know that in aquaponics we grow the plants from the fish food, right? And that's fish waste, we got nitrogen. But nitrogen is only only one of the nutrients that the plant needs. Uh, it's obviously the main one, they need mainly nitrogen, but they need others as well. And the others they are uh, minerals, uh, essential minerals as we say, or we sometimes call them trace elements because they are needed but in very very small quantity. If you have a big quantity it can be toxic, so you need a very small quantity of them. So um, among them we got obviously phosphorus, potassium, magnesium, iron, uh, calcium, all those type of minerals, there are a blend of them. And we want to make sure they are in our water. We want to make sure they are available for the plants. So for that, we sometimes add some rock dust into the powder. It's rocks that are crushed and they are a powder. And when we put them in the water, they dissolve in the water and they get available for the plants. Uh, that's what we want to do. But now when we see sometimes a plant, they have some deficiencies. It can happen. There is not, not enough minerals in the water. It's very hard to tell exactly what mineral it is. And when you analyze the water, it's also very difficult if you want to analyze every specific type of mineral that is in your water. So instead, in aquaponics, we use another, uh, type, another parameter. It's called the general hardness of the water. So GH. This parameter is going to basically give you how uh, loaded is your water in minerals. So it's calculated from the concentration of calcium and magnesium, but it gives you a good idea of the quantity of minerals you have in your water. And what you want is to have this range between 50 to 100 ppm or 50 to 100 milligrams per liters. That would be really good. 
a good concentration to have in your aquaponics water. And as we were talking about the pH, you know what is the worst in aquaponics is not to have a, a, a low pH or a high pH. The worst is to have some variations in the pH. That's what can really affect uh, your plants, your fish, but also your bacteria. So what we try to do is to maintain a pH that is ki kind of constant, no, not not moving up and down, but basically regular pH. And to do that, there is a possibility, uh, I mean, there is one parameter that we can uh, measure in our water, it's called the KH. It's actually the carbonate hardness of your water. And it's basically going to calculate the concentration of carbonate you have in your water. What are carbonate doing in the water? They, as I say, they, use, they act as a buffer, as a sponge, if you like and they avoid the pH to go up and down, they maintain the pH where it is. So I think that's a good thing to have a, a good KH in your uh, aquaponic system. And the concentration that I recommend is between 70 to 100 ppm. Another parameter that is quite interesting uh, is the oxygen that is dissolved into the water. So now let's be clear, uh, there are some tools, uh, some equipment to measure this concentration of oxygen into the water. It can be very important to know the concentration, the concentration of oxygen into your water if you have a high density of fish, if you have a lot of fish uh, per quantity of water. But in aquaponics, generally, we work with a low density of fish. We have a very small quantity of fish per volume of water comparing to intensified aquaculture. Uh, hence, in aquaculture, we use those tools, right? We have oximeters and we measure the water uh, oxygen concentration the morning and at night, and sometimes even during the day. But in aquaculture, it's, uh, in aquaponics, it's not that important because we offer the best conditions to our fish and we make sure to have a good uh, design and good equipment such as an air pump to make sure that the oxygen concentration is over hi always higher than the fish consumption. So this one is really up to you. If you want to uh, get um, an oximeter, you can uh, get some, but really, uh, normally you will be able to run an aquaponic system and to produce some fish in very good conditions without having to add uh, this specific part of equipment in your aquaponic system. Another parameter that is very important is the temperature of your water. Uh, so the, the equipment needed to, uh, to measure uh, the temperature of water, a thermometer, is very inexpensive. But I think it's very important to have a record of the water temperature during the year. Uh, because let's say the first year you're going to buy some fish, but then it's good because after one year of keeping those fish in an aquaponic system, if you keep a database of the different uh, water temperature during the year, then it's going to give you a range and you will be able to see if you can have other types of fish for the next years. So it's always good information to have on hand. So what is the material that you need to test your water? To test your water, you will need uh, what I recommend is to, to get the Freshwater Master uh, test kit. Uh, this is a box with a lot of different uh, bottles inside and test solutions. With this box, you can test the four parameters that are the most important that we saw just before. So we talked about uh, ammonia, nitrate, nitrate and pH. You can do those four parameters with this box and you can do over 800 tests with only one box. It's pretty inexpensive. I recommend you to check uh, the prices from uh, eBay around, but it's very, very inexpensive. I think around $40 for the box for 800 tests. So you see with, with one box, you can do several years. Uh, so very, very interesting to have. That's really the product that I recommend to have. If you want to have an aquaponic system, if you have an aquaponic system to manage it in good uh, conditions, this is the thing that you will need. Then for GH and KH, you can buy also some API test kits. Uh, they are also quite inexpensive. Uh, they work in the same way as this one, and we're going to see just after how it works. We're going to do some testing together. Uh, in terms of uh, oxygen concentration, you can get the oximeter, as I was describing just before, and temperature, the simple thermometer. So now let's see how to test the water. So to test the water, we're going to take this box with, with us, you know, the API Freshwater Master Kit. 
Inside we got four bottles. They are transparent bottles. I'm gonna show them to you. So when you buy the Freshwater Master Kit, you get a little booklet with some explanations how to use it. And you got a color chart. So that is super important. And that's what we're gonna use. When we do our testing, every time we use this color chart. So don't throw those papers away. They are very important. You got those four bottles with the Freshwater Master Test Kit. So a bottle look like this. I hope you can see it on the camera. And you see there is transparent bottle but there is a line in the middle and this line is basically representing five milliliters. So the line here we need to fill those four bottles with water from the aquaponic system up to the line. It's five milliliters. So that's what I'm gonna do right now with you. So just a little trick, when you fill your uh, bottle, your water bottle, you fill, you fill the full fin and then you need to drop some water to arrive at the line, right? So instead of doing like this, it's very difficult to know exactly where you are. You can just uh, shake the bottle in front of you. You do a forth and back <laughs> movement and it's going to drop some water but a little bit so if we look at uh, the level that we want to have here we are approximately one centimeter above here so here look at how i do tuck, tuck. and now i'm perfectly exactly where i wanted so the way it works you got the bottle and you got some uh, different uh, test solutions so for each parameter that we're going to test there are different test solutions so we're going to start with ammonia Ammonia has two bottles, two test solutions. So we take our water bottle and we're going to add some uh, test solutions inside to react and to, to basically color this water. So in terms of test solution for the ammonia, um, I'm going to take them right now. So I'm just going to show you how it looks like. Here we got those two bottles. We got the bottle one here. So on the bottle, you can see number one. I don't know if it's very clear on the camera. I hope it is. And on the bottle number two, you can clearly read bottle two. So obviously you start with the one and it makes total sense. And you read the number of drops that you need to put in the water. So here we can read eight, eight drops. Yeah. Uh, on the bottle two, we can read eight drops as well. But on other parameters, if you look at nitrates or nitrate or pH, it may be a, a different number of drops. So always look on the bottle. Bottle number one, number of drops. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take the bottle number one that I have here. I'm going to shake it very energetically. You need to do that because sometimes inside, you know, with time, you got a decantation and the chemicals inside, they fall on the, bottle, uh, on the bottom of the bottle. So you shake it for a while, you know, for several seconds. Uh, I think the, um, the supplier of this uh, equipment is asking to shake it for 30 seconds. So you may not have it to do it for 30 seconds, but do it for a while, like really strongly. Once it's done, you open the bottle. And now, I'll just remind you, we have to put eight drops. We can read eight on it. So I take my uh, water bottle and the test solution and I put the eight drops. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I stop at eight. Now what I'm doing, I'm closing uh, the test solution bottle. And I am closing my water bottle as well. Not with my finger, right? With a special lid, a special cap that is uh, supplied with the equipment. And now I'm shaking this. Shake it quite strongly. And what it's doing, obviously, it's uh, mixing the water with the chemical. And now I want to leave it to rest for one or two minutes. Yeah? So I leave it aside. 
and obviously I'm not going to wait two minutes in front of the camera, so we're going to cut here. Normally what I do, I do the other test in the same time, but I don't want to confuse you. I want to focus on the ammonia so you, you know exactly how to do it after. So I'm going to uh, cut the, the, the clip now and I see you in two minutes. Okay, so it's been two minutes since I added the first test solution inside. So now I'm going to take the bottle number two, test solution number two. And here they say I add eight drops, so I'm going to add eight drops of this test solution into this bottle. But before I have to shake it, you remember? Shake it energetically uh, for something like 30 seconds. Checked. I open this cap and I'm going to add the eight drops of ammonia. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Perfect. Now I'm looking at the test solution. And I'm locking the bottle with the little lid that is designed for it. I lock it down and now I shake it energetically. What we have to do after that, after shaking the bottle, we need to wait for five minutes. Five minutes, it's an average, but it's basically to make sure that all the, the ammonia that was into, the, into this water has reacted with the test solutions that we added inside and the color is going to change if there is ammonia inside. So I see you in five minutes for me in one second for you. Okay so it's been five minutes since uh, we did our water tests and now it's time to compare the water to see if there is ammonia into uh, my aquaponic system and what is the concentration. So you remember we say we have a color chart at the beginning. That's what we get, we have in the kit, in the fresh API Freshwater Master Kit. So you take the color chart, you take your water bottle and you're going to put it uh, nearby. So here I'm checking the ammonia. So I have to compare this water, the water of the bottle, to uh, the concentration that I have aside. Here to me it looks like I have, I have 0.25 ppm of ammonia into the water. Uh, so that's a concentration um, that is still in the range acceptable because basically between 0 to 0 0.5 ppm it's okay depending on the fish species that you have. And above 1 ppm that's critical. 1, 2 ppm you need to renew some water, we need to do something. So here it's acceptable. So we have ammonia here. Now what you will do, if you do a water test, you will need to do ammonia but also nitrate, nitrate and pH. But that's exactly the same thing, you know, I showed you the different, uh, uh, the different steps to obtain uh, this ammonia concentration. But you can do the same thing with uh, nitrate, nitrate and pH. I showed you this uh, uh, in this box, I explained to you that we have four parameters that we can uh, measure and that's how you do it, one by one, one after the other. So for the sake of this video, I'm not going to do all the tests one after the other because it becomes very repetitive and I'm sure you understood how we do it now. But what we're going to do now, we're going to see how to interpret the results, what we do with this result, because it's good to have something, to have some numbers, but if you don't have any uh, uh, any information on how to interpret them is completely useless. So let's interpret those results. So just before, at the beginning of this video, I gave you some uh, ranges, you know, I gave you some targets. And you need now to compare your results with the target range. So if you are in the target range, that's perfect, you don't have to do anything. But now if you are above the, the target range for the toxic elements, such as ammonia and nitrate, you need to do something quickly because your fish are going to be in trouble. So here we tested ammonia, we see that it's in the target range, but if it was 1 or 2 ppm, as I said, we will need to act action. So what are the things you need to do if you have a high toxicity in your water? 
there are four main things that you need to do. The first thing, if you have very toxic element in your water, you need to renew some water. Because when you remove some water from the system and you add new water, you basically dilute the concentration of toxicity that is in your water. Therefore, the fish are going to be way more relaxed and much better and they're going to survive. Second thing, that is very obvious to me, but I still need to highlight it, is to not feed the fish. Because when you feed the fish, you add more ammonia in the system. So you never feed a fish if it's in conditions where it's stressed. The third thing to do is to add more oxygen into the water. So when I say add more oxygen, we don't add pure oxygen, but we're going to increase the aeration. Because if the fish is stressed, it may consume more oxygen. So you want to make sure there is way enough oxygen for the fish to go through this peak of toxicity. And finally, once you have done those three things, the fourth is to not stress the fish. So once you have done everything, you just leave the fish to, uh, by themselves. You can put a lid on the fish tank if you like, keep them in the dark. But you don't want to stress them, you don't want to add more stress than they need. Right? They are already in a stress situation. If you add more stress, they may pass away. They may just die. So just uh, stay away from the fish tank once you have done all the things. And now it's time to think about the cause of what happened. Why did this happen? Because if you have ammonia or nitrite, it doesn't just happen by magic. It's because you have done something wrong. So as explained in my other videos, you have some balances to respect in aquaponics the balance between the quantity of fish and the quantity of bacteria. If you have too many fish for the quantity of bacteria that you have, you may have some peak of ammonia and nitrite. And maybe you don't have too many fish, but maybe you overfed the fish. If you put too much uh, fish food, even the fish are not going to eat it, but it's going to release some ammonia in the water. And if you don't have enough bacteria, it's going to increase. You're going to have a peak of ammonia and nitrite. So those things are very important. Once you uh, fix the emergency situation, you renew some water, you do those four things uh, I talked about. Now, <laughs> what you need to do is to find the cause and fix it. So very, very often, it's just because you have too many fish or you overfed your fish. So in this case, well, stop feeding your fish, obviously, but then when you refeed them, feed them slowly. And uh, you can probably sell a few fish, eat some if they are the good size, or give some to your friends. In terms of nitrates, if you have too much nitrates, too many nitrates, uh, more than what your fish can handle, which means basically over 100 ppm, 50 to 100 is start to be high, but over 100 it it's may stress the fish. So what I recommend to do, it's very simple and very good, is to take some water and water your normal garden with the water. Because this is a water with very high concentration of nutrients for the plant, so it's going to be perfect for your classic garden. And then when you add more water in your aquaponic system, that's just going to dilute the concentration of nitrate, which is exactly what we try to do. So perfect thing to do. Now, if you don't have enough nitrate, it can happen at the beginning. If you have just very small fish and not enough, uh, your plant may not find enough nutrients. So if your nitrate concentration is below 7 or 10 ppm, what you can do is either to add some uh, fertilizer for your plants in the water, it's just one of the options. Uh, the other option is to add more fish in your aquaponic system because your aquaponic system can handle more. So why not put in more fish in the system? In terms of GH, general hardness, if you find that uh, the concentration is very low comparing to the target range, what you can do is to simply add some rock dust into your water. It's going to basically increase the concentration of minerals in the water and it's going to increase the GH. For your KH, same thing, you can add some baking powder in the water. It's going to increase the KH and therefore maintain the pH a bit higher. So if you have a low pH, you can add baking powder in the system. It's going to, add, it's going to increase the KH and the pH and it's going to make the system more stable. It's going to create a buffer. Just be careful when you add the baking powder. Don't add too much all at once because, as I said before, what is really bad for the fish is not to have a high or low pH, but is to have quick variation. So if you have a lot of baking powder in your uh, aquaponic system, it may create a very, uh, very quick variation of pH and they may not like it, so go slowly. The final point was uh, the oxygen concentration, but as I said before, it's not very often that uh, I cross aquaponics enthusiasts who have uh, actually an oximeter who can uh, measure the oxygen concentration, but if it's your case, and if you find a low concentration of oxygen, you just have to increase the supply of oxygen the supply of 
aeration basically. So just add a little uh, air pump to your fish tank and it's gonna be fine, it's gonna fix the issue. So now that's good, we do some records, we do some uh, tests, water tests, you know how to do the water tests, you know to interpret uh, the results. But one thing that is even better is to record them, to keep some record in the long term. So um, just for you, I developed a very uh, a basic Excel spreadsheet but with, with all the information that you need to record uh, it's uh, available for free completely free I don't even ask you for your email it's free of access uh, on the website uh, aquaponics revolution on the on the post that I made about uh, water testing so go there on the bottom of the post uh, of the article basically you're gonna find uh, this Excel spreadsheet and you can download it and use it and every day or every time you do a uh, water analysis, so not every day, but maybe every uh, three or every week, every three days, every week or every month, you uh, add this record into your uh, database. And after the years, you're going to have a lot of data and it's going to help you to understand how your aquaponic system is uh, evolving. But it's also going to help you to select your future fish because you know that in your aquaponic system, you, gener you generally have a pH of that much and a temperature range of this. And it helps you to basically know exactly what you are able to offer for the future fish. So then it helps you to select the appropriate spaces for your aquaponic system. Also, if you have one day a problem, if you come to me, I would really enjoy if you can give me this uh, spreadsheet. It really helped me a lot. It's a lot of data that I can take to quickly assess your situation and see if you have a problem with your aquaponic system. So I hope you're going to use this uh, free spreadsheet on the website Aquaponics Revolution. If you are new to aquaponics, as always, I recommend you to get the six steps uh, training. It's a free guide to build your own aquaponic system uh, uh, and to grow some sustainable, healthy and tasty food at home. Uh, it helps you also to build the system but to manage it proper properly. So it's free, it's uh, either in the description of the video or on the website Aquaponics Revolution. Uh, on this website I have heaps of information so I really recommend you to go there and uh, take advantage of it. Uh, as always you know that it really helps when you give a like to the video, when you share it with your friends. And if you haven't done it yet, I recommend you to subscribe to the channel to not miss any of the future videos. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.